Welcome to part 3 of our series on Isotope RX5 for voice production. In the previous parts we looked at insight and loudness level compliance and in the next batch of videos uh, we will be looking at RX5 VST modules. There are 9 plugins but 2 of them, Monitor and Connect, uh, are used to set up RX5 as an external editor. So we'll look at them in the next video series. Keep an eye out for the instructions for the chance to win a copy of Isotope RX plugin bundle. There's also a grand prize of RX to be won. Today we will start with DHUM. A quick recap of my setup. I usually have four tracks in my editing session. One track for the main text recording and two tracks for a specific audio processing. These three tracks are then routed to a subgroup track that holds most of the processing plugins. Let's have a look at the plugins on the subgroup track. Uh, these plugins fall into the category that I would call Setup and Forget. Plugins such as EQ, uh, any dynamic processing plugins and noise gates. The two RX plugins in this FX chain are DHUM and Dialog Denoise. They are bypassed by default, but I would activate them whenever there is a constant hum or noise in the background. So let's have a look at the hum. Sometimes I get recordings that have a constant hum at 50 Hz and a harmonic at 100 Hz. This is produced by a ground loop from the electrical mains in Europe. If you are in the US, you might get a 60 Hz hum and a harmonic at 120 Hz instead. Here I have a bit of audio with a hum. Mother seemed restless, and every day stood at the bottom of the lane watching and waiting for an hour or so. If I increase the volume and play a silent part, you might be able to hear a faint tone. Before using the dehum plugin, however, it is a good idea to find out what is the frequency of the hum. To check where exactly is the hum frequency, I can open RX5 as an external editor and look where it is. You can clearly see the hum as a line in the spectrogram display. Can zoom in if necessary or just place the mouse pointer on top and check the frequency readout value. This particular hum is at 100 Hz and there is also some low frequency rumble, though it is interesting that there is nothing at 50 Hz. So in many cases I would start by using some of the presets as a starting point. However, if the hum does not fall in the usual 50 or 60 Hz, as in this case, I would use the free bass frequency option to place it exactly where I want. Another way to go about it is to use the learn option so that the program analyzes the audio and automatically finds the hum frequency for you. You can use the learn option in manual mode or in adaptive mode. Manual mode is used when the hum frequency does not change over time, whereas the adaptive mode is used for a hum frequency that changes over time. Notice how the notched frequency moves to 100 Hz automatically. This is quite a nice feature actually. If there were any harmonics, uh, I could add one or more notch frequencies with the number of harmonics slider. I might want to set the linking type to none to have independent control for each harmonic. Uh, you can use the linking type in conjunction with the slope fader to manipulate the odd and the even harmonics separately if you wish to. Play around with the filter cue and the gain reduction until you get the desired results. I usually also engage the high pass filter up to 50 Hz to minimize uh, any low frequency rumble. Plus, you can check output hum only to listen to the processed audio only to check how much you're taking out. Mother seemed restless. And every day stood at the bottom of the lane watching and waiting for an hour or so. The children pretended not to notice when she turned. In her eyes. Listen out for resonances or audio artifacts when taking out a substantial amount of decibels from a particular frequency 
or when notching a few harmonics at the same time. Mother seemed restless, and every day stood at the bottom of the lane watching and waiting for an hour or so. The children pretended not to notice when she turned and walked slowly back to the cottage with tears in her eyes. Mother seemed restless, and every day stood at the bottom of the lane watching and waiting for an hour or so. The children pretended not to notice when she turned and walked slowly back to the cottage with tears in her eyes. Mother seemed restless. OK, this is it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Next time we'll be looking at Dialogue Denoise.